Hi, my name is Stacy Pitts, and I'm the co-founder of CBD BioCare. And joining me today is Dr. Frank Michalski, who's a chiropractor, but also a certified uh, medicine professional in New York. And he is our CBD BioCare expert. He sees patients on a daily basis using CBD BioCare, and he's been studying this now for several years and as our go-to expert. And today we're going to talk about a topic that we're hearing more and more about. And I think the research is really promising in terms of how CBD can help people with MS or multiple sclerosis. So hello, Dr. Frank. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad that we decided to address this topic because I think, as you mentioned to me before, all of us, most of us, know somebody with MS. So of course, whenever we hear of something or um, talk to people who have conditions and we know that CBD, because that's our field, that's what we're passionate about, if we know that it can help people, we want to provide the science, we want to provide your expertise and your information combined with our expertise and what we know about CBD and say, how can CBD help these people fighting this autoimmune disease? Of course. So I, this one really hits home for me, and I'm glad that we're doing it because in Buffalo, we have a huge prevalence of MS. We have one of the largest clinics, Dent Neurology, that takes on MS here locally. So this is really an important topic. And CBD is extremely promising when it comes to helping those suffering from MS. And I, I like to start when I explain this topic by referencing the, the government patent that, we, that is out there on CBD because it provides a nice summary of how CBD may benefit MS. And what that patent basically explains is that cannabis, and mind you, CBD comes from the cannabis plant, has been shown to be a powerful antioxidant and neuroprotectant. So what does that mean? That means that CBD has been shown to protect our nervous system, which is composed of our brain and our spinal cord. If we know people suffering from MS, the two primary areas that become attacked are the nerves, which are located in the brain and the spinal cord. So anything that registers as a neuroprotectant, something that's going to protect our nerves, is very, very beneficial. I think it's all the more beneficial when the government actually holds the patent and some of the research on that topic. Now, in that patent, I like to go on and just reiterate they also mentioned that CBD does not appear to have that toxicity potential, those harsh side effects that some of these other drugs out there have. So it's a strong neuroprotectant, a strong neuroantioxidant without all of the potential side effects that we see from some of these other medications that I'm sure people with MS have experienced in the past. So that would be the, the basis of it. CBD is a strong neuro anti-inflammatory. It helps to fight inflammation. For those viewers who don't fully understand MS, on a very simple level, MS, imagine this. Imagine your nerves being a copper wire, okay? And imagine a plastic coating around that copper wire. If that plastic coating becomes damaged, it's very, very hard for those copper wires to communicate. Now, on our nerves in our body, we have a coating around them called the myelin sheath. This is what becomes attacked in MS. It's an autoimmune disease. The body starts to attack its own myelin, its own plastic coating around the nerves. When that happens, the nerves can no longer communicate back and forth to one another, and this then leads to inflammation of the nerves, inflammation of the brain. And what we're hearing right from the government patent is that CBD seems to play a role as a strong neuroprotectant. Now, more exciting, I would say, is there are clinical trials underneath the pharmaceutical drug Citivex. It's not currently legal in the United States or approved by the FDA, but they are seeing very, very promising literature for the use of cannabinoids to actually treat MS. I will say as a disclaimer, Citivex is a one-to-one -one ratio of THC to CBD. So it does involve THC. And for many of those suffering from MS, the THC does seem to play a, a role in helping with the muscle spasticity and some of the pain that they experience. So do you think that the CBD helps 
repair or restore that sheath? Or do you think that the CBD is calming the triggers that create a flare up in someone that has MS? Of course, I think we're still waiting for the research to be able to say it's repairing. So I, I would love to, be, to believe that. And I hope one day we find that. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do. But for right now, most of the focus on the research is calming down the triggers that surround MS. So most people suffering from MS will agree that stress is a trigger. It results in a flare-up. A flare-up might be muscle spasticity, very bad fatigue. Um, at pain, an increase in pain. So stress, stress is a trigger. Heat sensitivity is often a trigger for MS. Infections, common infections such as the cold or the flu are often triggers for MS. And insomnia would probably be the other large figure because insomnia certainly can result in fatigue. So we know that CBD can benefit a healthy stress response. We know that CBD has anti-anxiety effects. That's already been proven. So if we have a patient with MS and they're very anxious, they, they work a high stress job or they're stressed because unfortunately this disease has put them on disability, if CBD can help with that, I think that's an amazing thing. We know CBD benefits the immune system. Now, can I say it prevents the flu or prevents a cold? No, but we do know it is an immune, it's an antioxidant. It has positive benefits on our immune system. So if we can use CBD to prevent an immune system flare up, that's a great thing. And I'm sure you'll agree with this one, Stacy. sleep and pain are probably the top two reasons we hear people using CBD biocare products, right? Um, when it comes to sleep, how many people have you heard say that their sleep is better and that their pain is decreased? So if we can, if we can help people suffering from MS with sleep cycles, helping get them a healthier sleep cycle and helping them reduce pain, could we then potentially have less flare-ups? Could that then potentially lead to a slowing down to the progression of that disease? I don't think it's going to be long before the research points us in that direction. It's so encouraging to hear that. Um, I had a friend in high school who um, actually passed away from MS and she died very early and, it, you know, left children behind and it was really, really devastating. And, you know, thank goodness uh, that was 25 years ago because uh, she died about five years out of high school. So very, very young. And you don't really hear that anymore, at least in, in within the people that I've associated with. Um, so thank goodness. It seems that that the medical community has progressed in terms of, of treating people or helping people live a full life with this disease. But it is so encouraging when I hear you talk about what CBD could potentially do for the, the millions of people who are suffering from this disease to give them a, a better quality life. And now you're seeing celebrities that are coming out and they're, they're stating that they have MS and living a relatively normal, quote unquote, right, lifestyle, which is amazing. And that's what we want. And so if CBD can come along and partner with those people, if you will, and say, hey, we're going to help you sleep better. We're going to help uh, to reduce stress. We're going to help with pain. Uh, you know, some people have tremendous success using CBD for pain. Some people, they find that it, it helps with the, the pain, but wow, are they sleeping better? So everybody's a little bit different, but it's so encouraging to hear what you're saying. I've worked, you know, one-on-one -on -one with an individual I can think of. He, you know, we're not going to use names, but he's uh, very prominent on YouTube speaking about MS, uh, someone else. And it's, a, it's really amazing. I got the opportunity. I was actually working with them in a fitness um, regimen. They were actually exercising and strengthening their muscles. And he would be the first one to tell you how much he supports cannabis and how much it's actually done for him. He was one of those using more of a one-to-one -one ratio through dent neurology. But even with the additional CBD, he felt there was further benefit. And I can tell you, I saw it. I saw it firsthand. It was really an amazing thing. And it's not that everyone's going to get those results, but I do believe there are many people because you're seeing their personal stories. I got to see one of them firsthand. It was truly an incredible, an incredible transformation, um, especially as we here in New York, that, that occurred after we got the legalization for medical marijuana. It was really an amazing thing. Um, I like 
Yeah, please. Well, I was just going to say, you know, cannabis continues to amaze me. Um, you know, it was really off my radar for so many years. I thought it was just honestly something people with cancer wanted to use to help with pain and to help them with end of life coping. I mean, that was my only uh, really idea of what medical cannabis really means. And now we know without a shadow of a doubt that medical cannabis means two things. It means medical grade hemp that is the exact same thing as the marijuana plant except it has low thc and then you have in the with all the cannabinoids with all the terpenes and everything wonderful and that's what we offer at cbd biocare a, a full spectrum of full plant wonderful medicinal product and then on the flip side you have what we used to think was the only medical cannabis out there which was the marijuana that that people used and you know thank goodness the the laws are changing cbd is legal for us to ship to anywhere in the united states and 40 countries around the world so and the the laws on cannabis in general are loosening up um so you have to check what's available in your own state or city or whatever but it's so encouraging because we're learning more and there is still so much to learn but let's talk a little bit more because i i don't know that people are going to understand the one-to-one -one ratio so we always tell people look cbd is legal and it's easy to get it's easy to take there's some things that you need to know to make sure that you're getting a quality product and you can go to our website on the home page and there are six points there and it talks about the six things you need to know before you buy a CBD product to make sure that you're getting a good quality. So vet the company. Of course, we'd welcome your business at CBD BioCare. We're here to answer your questions. Dr. Frank is available to you. So that is available. Uh, second of all, it, so try CBD, enter that into your regimen, and Dr. Frank can talk about more about when, when do you incorporate or when do you search for THC, because I always say cannabis works. It's a matter of finding what works for you. When is CBD alone okay? And when do you need to explore uh, entering into the, the THC community and start um, you know, seeing if that can help give you even more benefits? So if you could take that a step further from your standpoint about you know, talking about how much, where do you start and when is THC an option? Yeah, so in our experience and here in New York, so this is how we work with people. If they're not already seeing a neurologist, which all of them are, everyone I work with is already seeing a neurologist, it's usually the neurologist who introduces the idea of the THC, and then we kind of handle the CBD side of things. So when it comes to CBD, I think that's the easiest starting point. You don't need to go through a registry in New York. You don't need to get a medical card for it. It's just much easier to acquire a quality product. Obviously, we work with your company, and that's, that's easy for us. So we, we usually start patients on that if they're not already using a THC product, which here in New York, many already are. I think they actually have statistics on this. As high as 66% of people with MS are actually using cannabis already. The reason why we start with CBD is most of the health benefits um, revolved around cannabis are from the CBD itself. And in our opinion, less is more. Not that we have anything at all against THC, but if you could get away with just a CBD product and potentially avoid any of those psychoactive effects, why would you not want to do that? Now, in my experience, the individuals who start to speak uh, with their neurologist to seek out the, the THC containing products in addition to the CBD are the ones who are really suffering from pain and muscle spasticity. Those individuals with the more advanced symptoms of MS, they seem to do quite well with the THC containing products. Now in New York, we're not allowed to advise on THC. They have to go through a registered physician that's set up with a medical marijuana clinic. But the people that I see going that, that direction are the ones with the really bad muscle, muscle spasms and the ones with a lot of pain. Um, and, and again, that depends on the, the, the progression of the disease, how, early, how long ago were they diagnosed, how advanced is it. That's really where we start to see CTHC become involved. Um, Sativex, you said this earlier, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means it's one part THC, one part CBD, equal quantities of each. Um, the, one of the main things they talked about in their findings with the, uh, the clinical trials 
was the improvement of quality of life. That was what people said. Pain was down. Fatigue was uh, not so bad. Sleep was improved. Focus was improved. Quality of life factors. And when you look at the treatments currently out there, traditional medical treatments, the aim is to help these people have a better quality of life because right now there is no cure-all. The other thing I would like to mention too that we've seen firsthand and that they saw in this clinical trial with Sativex in other countries, these people were able to significantly reduce other medications. Let's not forget many people suffering from MS, they're prescribed opioids, they're prescribed anti-anxiety medications, benzodiazepines, they're prescribed antidepressants and pills for insomnia. All those medications come with side effects. We are always the fan of less is more. And I think most patients, most people out there at this point in time would agree they want to be taking less, not more. And those using CBD seem, I I believe many of them accomplish that. So, so, um, is MS easily diagnosed? I've, I've heard some, some things before with some reports that have stated that people can have MS-like symptoms, but not actually have MS. So do you think that this is a disease that is um, misdiagnosed often, or do you think that that's not really an issue? No. So I don't know so much of misdiagnosis, but I think it's missed a lot, right? From a, you, we, We've seen this before. We had one case of MS in my five and a half years, and they had seen so many people for numbness and tingling in the legs. And no one ever thought young female, no one ever thought MS. And we were fortunate that having the background that I had through functional medicine things, it was the first thing that crossed my mind when I saw her. I wasn't even thinking about chiropractic work. I was thinking this girl might have MS. And it turned out she got worked up by a neurologist and she did. So I think maybe sometimes at the entry level medical visit, it might be missed or it might be blown off as back pain or sciatica pain. So that, that I do believe is still a problem. Once you're into the neurologist office and they're doing blood work and they're doing MRIs of the cervical spine and the brain, and they're doing a spinal tap at that point, I think a diagnosis of MS is, is pretty comprehensive, especially with the nerve conduction studies involved. But there are such things as a, just an acute flare-up of MS-like symptoms that doesn't, it's MS, but it doesn't really qualify and you just kind of watch it as it goes. Like they'll tell you at the physician's office, we'll watch and see. This, this might be MS, but at this point we're not going to do anything. Maybe they'll just prescribe a, a one or two time prednisone steroid pack. So, so there are acute MS flare-ups, then you have progressive MS, and then there's three or four different types. I'm I'm certainly not the expert on on each type, but there is one that is just acute. Um, I think the more knowledge, the entry level, the non-specialist has about it, your physical therapist, your chiropractor, your primary care physician, your gastroenterologist, your OBGYN, the more knowledge they have, that should eventually lead to a better diagnosis. But once they're in that neurologist office, I think it's pretty concrete. Okay, uh, good to know. Uh, So I think the most logical next question is, you know, where to start? I automatically think if somebody is suffering from nerve pain and, um, you know, having some of these these, um, flare-ups, I immediately go to the 3500 because it's our strongest and it can be, uh, you know, you can take one drop or you can take a full dropper. But is that too much? Where would you recommend people start? So as we say in all of our videos, it's going to be very individualized. I, in my experience in talking to patients and working with patients, I don't see anyone below 30 milligrams a day. I, I think that's very unusual. So 30 milligrams a day and the 3,500 is a very simple, it, it's two drops in the morning, two drops in the afternoon, and two drops in the evening. I love the 3,500 milligram because one drop is five milligrams of CBD. So I think that's a very easy way for patients to work up or work down that serving size or that dosage. So we're always recommending the 3,500 when we see a disease like MS. And most of the authorities, the books that you see written, the research out there would recommend between that standard to macro dose, which is anywhere from 10 milligrams a day upwards of 400 milligrams a day. 
I've seen studies referencing giving people upwards of 1,400 milligrams a day. I wouldn't recommend that. That's not something I'm doing. But they reported that it was tolerated in some of these individuals. So um, I think most people are probably going to be between 30 and 300 milligrams a day. That's, that's probably a safe, a safe bet. Hence the 3,500. To get the 500, it's just it's not enough per drop. And I love being able to say one drop is five milligrams, two drops is 10, three drops is 15. It's simple. It, it leads to an easy compliance. And the nice thing about the, it, any CBD product that you're taking of ours, you can increase or decrease as needed. And if you're having a flare up, then you would want to take more to manage that flare up or the pain. And, and that's the other nice thing is that it, you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to overdose. So you can take more when needed or take less when needed. A lot of people are going to ask this too. So you should always work with your neurologist, of course, on these topics. Chances are you're going to be using other medications, of course. Now, I can say this though, from the Sativix study, from some other things that they looked at, the amazing thing was even in higher amounts, CBD was well tolerated in the presence of other medications. People always ask about medication interactions and there's always that potential. It's good to make your physician aware, but they're not seeing those interactions with commonly prescribed MS drugs. That's, that does not at the time seem to be a concern. Let your medical team make them aware, but the, the concern just is not there right now in the literature. It's, it, it appears very well tolerated and very, very safe. And, and to your point, we always tell people that this is just what the research is suggesting and we're sharing our experiences and our knowledge of the CBD products. Uh, but of course, always work with your physician. And we're certainly not recommending that you stop taking the medication that right. you've been given. But we do have so many success stories of people talking about medications being decreased. Um, and uh, to your point, what, if it helps with sleep, now you're not taking some other product to help with sleep, you know, because so often in the so often in the medical community we find that we take this pill and then this pill causes us to take this pill and so on and so forth. So, really, really encouraging uh, information from you today. Of course, anytime. I'm happy to share. So like I said, MS is is a huge problem here where I'm from, Buffalo, New York. So this is always a topic I love spreading information about. Well, I, I'm sure it will help people around the country and even around the world. And I'm excited to see what more on what the research says and how CBD will continue to help people uh, who are suffering from this disease. So thank you, Dr. Frank. Anytime, Stacey. Thank you.